Good morning, Huddlers. Happy Friday. Are you getting ready for Mother's Day? Well, you better be. I'm getting ready for Mother's Day. And uh, I've got a question for, let's see, how about Andrea? My <laughs> God, Darrell. Andrea, I think you're going to get this one right off the bat. What do you call a line of men waiting to get haircuts? <laughs> I don't know, Zorel. I don't think you will be in that line, but I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, that's the joke. <laughs> uh, I'll get you out of your misery. It's the barber. That was perfect. It's, the it's, a bar it's a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> the barbecue. Oh, boy. Oh. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Now, Andrea, I don't know if that was kosher, what you did. <laughs> But it sure as hell was funny. <laughs> I'm telling well, you, Sorrel, you will not be in that line. That's what I am. Welcome to the Daily Huddle, everyone. This morning, we've got the perfect question, <laughs> given what Andrea just did. It says, law number four for success is to respect the other persons of the world. <laughs> Now, in business, uh, we work really hard to get our businesses to grow and be successful. And what I want you to consider this morning is that the, the distance between wild success and where you are right now in business may just be that. Something that you're blind to right now that involves respecting the other person's. And we have a phenomenal guest this morning who's going to guide us into that conversation. And before we get rolling, I have a few questions for our friends here. Peter, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good to be back. Peter, how are you and who are you going to hug today? I, I did it already, but I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to hug my wife again. <laughs> and um, I, we, we said, how are you doing today? Uh, yeah, um, I, yeah, how are honestly, you? Yeah. I'm doing fantastic. That is awesome. You are fantastic because that's the way you say you are. Good morning, Ronald. Welcome. Ronald, where are you and what are you grateful for this morning? Yes, uh, good morning, Sorrel. Um, where I am, I am right here, right now with the Daily Hodler. And what I'm, what I'm grateful for today, I'm grateful for good humor. I'm ah. grateful for good humor. <laughs> yeah, good humor get the day started. Ah. I'm grateful for that. Thank, thank you, Andrea <laughs> <laughs> and Sorrel. The both jokes were perfect. I'm grateful for good humor. <laughs> That's awesome. And Tara, <laughs> it's so great to see you here. What time is it, Tara? Good morning, all. The time is now. The only time we have right now. It is right now. Welcome, Tara. And it's the perfect time to sink our teeth into this, right? Uh, many of you were raised to respect others, weren't you? And, and yet, tons and tons of people go across the world feeling disrespected. And that feeling actually uh, engenders something in terms of how they produce, how they interact with each other, uh, the, the level of functionality or dysfunctionality that exists in organizations and families. So uh, this morning, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you again, our neuro-linguistic programming trainer and coach, Miss Brigitte Helfele. And she is German by birth, but really, American to the core. And it's always a pleasure to have Brigitte here. She says it in her own words. I'm German by birth, American by choice, 
educator by trade, a speaker and trainer by heart design. She's the CEO by passion and executive board member of the International Coaching Federation. And Brigitte's here to dig into this question with us. Good morning, Brigitte, and welcome back to the Daily Idol. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Sorel, for a beautiful introduction. And you know what? I agree with you guys. You are here right now at the right time, at the right place, because everything is perfect the way it is right now. And when we can just kind of sit with that for a second and appreciate it, because too many people are either stuck in the past or living in the future of all the things that I that need to happen today, tomorrow, this weekend, it's Mother's Day weekend, but just take a deep breath and get centered and get present right now. Yeah. So when it comes to respect, Brigida, uh, there, there's probably the way, not probably, there's the way that we human beings relate to respect, the word, its definition. And in the context you're bringing it to us this morning, what do you call respect? Yeah, it, it, I think it's a respect on a deeper level than what we have maybe learned in our upbringing. And can we agree, because we have a very diverse group here on the screen and then also in the listeners, um, can we agree that we all grew up with a different um, interpretation of respect? Right. Pretty sure. So that when your parents taught you respect, it was a little bit different than when I was taught respect in Germany. And I think that's true for everyone here. And the beautiful thing here is that it's not wrong. It's different. And that's where I really want to go today with the, respecting the other person, the other. If we just take person out, the other of the world and the other person's model of the wor world. So we can add the other person's model to the sentence and we can take the person out and just res start respecting the other. And what I mean by that, Sorel, and everyone that is on this morning, the, the huddlers, um, what is the other? And, and this is not a rhetor rhetorical question. I wanna ask you, what other do we have? I'll give an example. There is the other culture. There is the other religion. What else can we call other? Anyone? What other the, others do you the have? The other gender. The other gender. The other color. The other way people dress. You know, this is, this is the, the way people wear their hair or not. <laughs> we go. <laughs> Yes, it's, it is, the question here is how are you, and let's take the word respect out. How, how are you just being, and let's bring the present in again. How are you being present with these people? How are you going into a conversation with a person that is not of the, your, the same opinion because there are other opinions? How are you staying present with the person that has a different opinion than you? And rather than one making or me making them, now it's a me versus them conversation, me making them wrong, what would happen if we would listen? What would happen if we would listen to their side, the other? We don't have to agree with them. But what would happen if we would start having a non-emotional, respectful conversation? And I think nowadays the, the, the social media has amplified and um, uh, sped up the, the, the whole concept of being really quick of judging someone else in where they are in their opinion, where they are in their culture, where they are in their mindset, where they are, fill in the other blank, right? So respecting the other person's model of the world really means to A, listen, where are they coming from? And what point are they making? Because when you start to listen on a deeper level, there's actually information that will give you 
and that will give you some, some more, somewhat of a compassion to where they're coming from. It gives you an insight to their belief system. It gives you an insight to probably their upbringing, their experiences. Those are all filters. If you recall our other models that we've talked about in, in, the, uh, in the months before, it really gives you an insight of how they are um, or how I am if I am the other, how I am taking in information, how I am storing information, what is most important to me and what is not important to me at all, what I value most, what I value least, what I believe in, what I do not believe in at all. This is not a conversation about politics, about religion, about race or skin color or any of that. This is this is truly, if we peel back all of the layers of the onion, this is a conversation about how willing are you to really listen to the other person and don't have to be convincing that they got to see your side of the world because that's really what's happening, right? Oh, no, 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 you're wrong. You're wrong. You got to listen to my side. And that's what's happening. I think that's happening now more um, pronounced than ever before because we do have social media. We, we, we are so quick in communicating or think or at least people are thinking they are communicating where they're just jumping to conclusions and judging or where they're they're reading something and they're taking that bit of information and because of that bit of information they put them in this box with all of the other people that are like that and Brigida you 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 said two things earlier you talked about being present with another and everything you're saying now is starting to give me a sense of what it looks like to be not present. So how do you practice being present with another in the model you're creating? And, well, uh, and how does that engender respecting them? Yeah, great question. So being present means you got to take time. Carve out time. Carve out time and carve out time to listen and carve out time to listen on a deeper level. So listen for clues. And when you fi start fine tuning your listening skills, you're going to start l l hearing that more. Listening for clues of what people value. Listening for clues of why they believe the beliefs that they believe. There's evidence that they have... Um, collected over years and decades that really form that belief. You don't have to agree with that belief, but when you can be present in listening and deciphering the evidence of that belief or the belief itself, then you can start relating to that belief. Now, I'm, I'm saying relating and not understanding, right? The book, the good book says, seek to understand, not to be understood. And that's the whole concept of it. Seek to understand, which means listen to the other, lean in and shut up. That's my interpretation, okay? Now, I do have a little bit of a, mm, I'm on the edge with the word understand. Because I cannot understand, Sorel, your upbringing. I've never been to Haiti. I do not speak your language. I do not know the traditions of your culture. Therefore, I cannot understand. I can relate. I can find some, um, I can find a, a, a baseline or some reference points that I can relate to. But then I also got to be mindful and ask you, is that what you mean? Is that how you feel? Is that what you believe? We're not mind readers. And yet we jump to conclusions. We jump to assumptions. We're thinking that's what you're saying, or that's what you believe, or that's what you're doing. And that's where the biggest problems occur. And that's not respectful. The respect comes in when we listen, when we create a baseline, when we ask more quality questions and then start relating to them, but not, oh, you know, on a surface level. So this is who you are. This is what you believe. This is what you do. 
Therefore, I know and I understand what you do. There's no way I can ever know or understand who you are and what you do unless we continue to have deeper conversations. And I truly, in presence, listen to you and where you come from, not culturally, but also culturally, but in your mindset, in your belief system, in your, in your thinking, in your filter. Today, today is an invitation for those types of conversations. And we're, we're speaking to entrepreneurs and leaders. And I'm thinking, some people may be thinking, well, gosh, you know, uh, Brigitte, this is all well and good in personal relationships. How does that apply to my business, my relationship with my employees, my relationship with my vendors and competitors? Do, do you have uh, an example of how that applies in business and uh, where you've successfully applied it? Yeah, f first of all, I totally and miserably failed at it in the beginning. Um, and my, in my own business, I was coming from a different culture, coming from a preconceived uh, perception of this is how you do business, the German way, right? We're very, and I come from Stuttgart, where we, where we build great cars and, you know, we're very efficient in what we do. And every Saturday we clean uh, not just the house, but everything in front of the house may belong to us or not. So I'm, I'm very efficient in what I do. Coming to the U.S. to build a business, I applied that same strategy because it's the only strategy I knew growing up. And I failed, but I didn't continue to fail because failure is feedback. That's another law that we're going to touch on at some other point. And it's feedback. And it gave me an opportunity to look at, okay, well, first I pointed fingers at, at all the others. You all, you know, I, I had clients leave, I had staff leave, and I, and I said, uh, you you're all dummies. You're all leaving a really good thing. You're all dummies. That was, that was my first reaction. And then it happened over and over again. And I'm like, wait a minute, who's the dummy here? Right? So I had to have a realization for myself and I did. And I said, what am I missing? And that's when I realized that I am seeking to be understood rather than to understand the others. And when I turned it around, when I started to, to go on a deeper level of, of personal and business development, I realized there are, other, there are people that don't value the same values that I value. Oh, what a concept. What a shock. Not everyone is as, tick, 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 tick. Not everyone is as quick on, in, in, in doing things. You know, when I hire teachers, they are... Um, they are most caring and most knowledgeable. Those are their core values, knowledge and care. My core values are action and strategy. Those two core values did not add up and I did not speak to their values. But I was waiting for them to speak to my values. As a leader, it's, it's, it's our job to be most flexible in our communication and speak to other people's beliefs, to speak to other people's values. That doesn't mean that, we, that we're inauthentic or that we're um, losing our own identity. It's not what that means at all. It means that you're a great leader and that, you're, that, you, that you have the ability to be most flexible in your communication. Now, I, had a, uh, I have a really uh, fun point to make and uh, it, it's business related. Well, it's, it's both, it's personal and business related. And guys, it's personal and business at any given moment because we're holistic beings, right? I studied Gestalt. We are one being, we're one big, we're one uh, holistic Gestalt. Gestalt is a German word and it means the entire whole being. Business, our business problems, if you will, bleed over into our personal life and our personal problems bleed over into our business life. Whatever works, Great, bleeds over into the other. Whatever doesn't work also bleeds over into the other. So I did a certification. I had a, a certification training not long ago. And one of our participants 
um, as we were speaking about values and beliefs in class, it was the second day, uh, she brought up in an exercise that we did that her landlord, who she'd been renting from for over nine years, she does not like, the two of them are like, you know, fire and ice. They do not see eye to eye. They don't hardly ever talk. And when they talk, it's like, it's like pulling teeth. And they, they just, they literally do not speak the same language, although they both speak English. And I asked her, tell me a little bit more about this person. And she told me his name, his name is Alain. And I said, oh, Alain sounds French or maybe he's from Belgium, but you know, wh wh where is he from? Is he American? And she says, no, he, he's not American. I don't know where he's from. And I'm like, wow, in all of those nine years, she doesn't know where he's from. So I said, let's look him up. So we looked him up on LinkedIn. Turns out Alain is from Israel. And I said, I want you to do one tiny little thing. When you see him the next time, just greet him with Shalom and see what happens. That evening, because she's building a deck, that evening she went home. And she and Alain was there when she got home. She's calling me like two hours after she left the, the sec second day of our certification training. And she was so excited. And she says, Alain was there because he needed to get something from the house. And, and I said, okay, so what did you do? And she says, Shalom, Alain. And she says, and after that, it was like a totally different person. He said, Shalom. And then he's just started speaking and they started having a good time and they started talking about the deck and how he's excited that she's building a deck and all of these great things that never happened in nine years. One word. But if you do not know what that word is, then you're going to continue to miscommunicate for the next nine years. Really, to, to communicate and respect is to see the other just for what they are and who they are, and to just be with that and be present with that and honor uh, and honor that. That's what I'm getting. Uh, that is awesome. So let's open it up and see what others think, what others may be dealing with. Comments, questions, yeah, buts, come on. Come on, Tara. Tara, your husband's from Bavaria. Where is he from? Because my husband's from Bavaria as well. Oh, uh, we are actually headed that way in a couple of weeks. Uh, a little town called Wasserlosen. And it's you, you wouldn't have heard of it probably, but I can't think of the place it's closest to. I'll, it'll come to me when I'm not on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to thank you. This is this conversation is 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 at the core of a lot of what I teach and what I think about. And when we hear messaging like this, I think like the initial reaction is, well, I already, I already know this, I'm good at it. But then I, I always coach myself to say, rather than thinking, ooh, I need to tell a friend, like how much better can I be at this? And we can always, always get better. And I'll tell you what hit me as where I can improve. And I think I took a step in the right direction yesterday. Somebody shared with me something very painful and Typically, we will say either I understand or we will say, um, oh, I can't imagine. And yesterday, and here's where I want you to say, yes, Terry, you're on the right track. I said, I can't truly understand, but I want to try. Just, you know, there was nothing more I could say. I couldn't talk him out of his emotions. I can't, I certainly can't change his perspective of what he endured but I absolutely want to try how, tell me how I could have done better with that conversation. Well, and, and that, th what you just did was perfect. Ask him, what can I do? What can I do in this moment? And sometimes the person says just to be there, just to be here. And even in stillness, right? Silence is beautiful. And most people have the need to fill the silence. But just be with that person and 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 hold that space. And Tara, I'm so grateful what you just shared. Many years ago in my business, one of the uh, one of the parents called me after hours, and she's in tears. This was like 
I don't know, 15 years ago. And um, turns out her four-year-old daughter was diagnosed with leukemia. And I'm on the phone, not knowing anything yet, right? I'm this, this green business owner that really doesn't know anything. And I say, I understand. And I'm trying to calm her. That was my intention to calm her and to be there with her and trying to fill the space, which was very uncomfortable for me because I truly cannot understand. I have two very healthy children. And she went ballistic and rightfully so because mm-hmm. I cannot understand. I lost, I lost that parent that night with three children at my school. Oh. We cannot understand. And that is, I think, if you don't walk away with anything else, you can relate, you can hold space, and you can, asking good questions is always a beautiful thing, or allowing stillness to be is also a beautiful thing. Yeah, thank you, Tara. Thank you. Andrea. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for this, Brigida. It was, I was what triggered to me and what made it in the business context was the respect that we have as business owners of people presenting to audiences is to understand the audience. So you, you made me think that whenever we're preparing for a meeting, whenever we're preparing for a presentation, showing respect to the others is being prepared. It's understanding who they are. It's speaking in their terms. It's speaking, it's relating to them. So I was using this more one-on-one personal connection into potentially larger groups. So that's where my question is going. Is it kind of the same approach? Is it the same, not just in one-on-one, but a group sessions? Yes. And let me, let me give you an example of what that looks like in a group session, but Mm -hmm. because when you're in a group session, you got to be able to be so flexible that it's almost like you're speaking in waves or in a rainbow. Mm -hmm. So one of my clients, uh, he's an IT consultant and he was talking to a large IT company to come in and do a consultancy. It was a $250,000 project that Mm -hmm. he was pitching and he went through the first pitch And they said, we love it, but we want you to come back and pitch to the board of directors. So he goes in, he asks me, what do I, you know, how do I, how do I prepare myself to speak to them? And I said, well, you're going to take the same PowerPoint presentation, the same knowledge that you, you know, pitched the the, the other department, but you're going to first, you're going to build rapport. And you're going to start asking some really good questions of what peop- what do the people around the boardroom table value and mm-hmm. make it a lo- little fun game. And he did that. There were eight people around the boardroom table and he asked them what they value most as they were going into an introduction round. And what turned out that the majority of people around the, the boardroom table were high caring, nurturing people. They were not those super duper geeks, you know, high knowledge folks or strategy people. They were most caring. So what did he do? He closed his computer and he pitched his mm-hmm. presentation from the heart. Exactly. Yeah. He did. He would have not been able to do that if he would have not asked that good question. And he got the $250,000 deal. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for creating such a rich conversation. Brigida, we're at 29 after. If you were going to leave us with one more nugget, what would you say? One more nugget. I would say find someone today that is not like you Hmm. and practice what you just learned. Implementation is key. Uh, we always uh, end the daily huddle with our seven tenets. And I'm really mindful and present today that I actually don't know how to do any of them. And today the invitation is to maybe stand there. Stand in that you don't know how to love until you relate to another. You don't know how to give until you relate to another at the level that Brigitte is uh, recommending that uh, 
you don't even know how to stress less until you start relating to yourself in a way that you've never related to yourself before. So this deal about respecting the others, there are just so many others that I'm discovering that I carry right here. So there's the opportunity to, to just be, be present. And uh, yes, you do know how to eat mostly plant-based, but maybe you won't because you haven't spent that kind of time with yourself. I don't know how to give. I don't know how to sleep. And the movements I do and all the moving I do won't amount to anything because I'll stop. Because somewhere I have not taken the time to respect myself and respect others. Folks, my name is Sorel Kitan. I am the host of The Daily Huddle. My co-hosts are many from Monday through Friday. And my dear friend and co-founder, Giovanni Gonzalez, is out uh, uh, transforming the world on our behalf. We wish him well. Uh, welcome to The Daily Huddle. I'm so thankful you're here. Happy Mother's Day weekend. See you here bright and early on Monday morning. Until then. Appreciate it. I think the German word is dinner. Dinner. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs>